subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm yeshi chonso Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 26th of January. India celebrates 73rd Republic Day with pageantry and grand parade. Opposition lambasts government as Pakistan slips further on corruption index. And eight groups press Taliban on gender equality during Oslo meeting. And now for all the details. India on Wednesday celebrated its 73rd Republic Day, which commemorates the date when the constitution of the country came into force in 1950 with the Green Parade at capital New Delhi's Rajpath showcasing its military prowess and cultural pageantry. This year's celebrations are significant. It's the 75th anniversary of India's independence being observed as Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav across the country. India celebrated its 73rd Republic Day with pageantry and military parade with Prime Minister Narendra Modi and President Ramnath Kovind leading the celebrations on Wednesday. PM Modi paid homage to the armed forces personnel who were killed in action at the National War Memorial prior to participating in the Republic Day celebrations. With a limited number of attendees present due to the coronavirus pandemic, the parade displayed the country's military prowess, tradition and culture at Rajpath. a ceremonial boulevard the parade began as the contingents of paramilitary crpf the indian coast guard indian air force among others marched at rajpath to mark the occasion the only serving active host cavalry regiment in the world 61 cavalry centurion tank and bt arjun mk1 tank of indian army akash weapon system were some among those displayed at the parade adding to the grandeur of the parade as many as 21 tableau including those of 12 states and 9 ministries or government departments highlighting flagship initiatives were part of the grand parade the state showcased india's cultural diversity with themes ranging from the freedom struggle to biodiversity one of the main attractions of the annual republic day parade was its largest fly past ever as many as 75 aircraft of the indian air force conducted the fly past This year's celebrations are significant. It's the 75th anniversary of India's independence, being observed as Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav across the country. India won independence from British rule on August 15, 1947, but it was not until January 26, 1950 that the nation declared itself a sovereign republic state with the adoption of its constitution. As part of the celebrations beating retreat ceremony was observed at the Atari Wagga border the road check post between India and Pakistan in northern Punjab state the drill signifies the rivalry brotherhood and cooperation between India and Pakistan the ceremony is not only a daily drill performed by the border security force and the Pakistan rangers but it has also emerged as a major tourist attraction on both sides of the red cliff line India on Tuesday hit back at Pakistan for misusing the platform provided by the United Nations to propagate false and malicious propaganda against New Delhi and said that Islamabad has an established history of aiding and actively supporting terrorists. India at the United Nations Security Council on Tuesday stated that perpetrators of the 2008 Mumbai terror attacks continue to enjoy patronage of Pakistan underlining the threat posed to civilians from terrorism addressing a UNSC debate on protection of civilians in armed conflict counselor in India's permanent mission to the UN R Madhusudan said the member states are well aware that Pakistan has had an established history of harboring aiding and actively supporting terrorists His comments came after Pakistani diplomat Munir Akram misused the platform provided by the UN to propagate false and malicious propaganda against India. Pakistan has a, an established history of harboring, aiding and actively supporting terrorists. 
This is a country that has been globally recognized as a sponsor of terrorism and holds the ignoble record of hosting the largest number of terrorists proscribed by the Security Council. So much so that most of the terrorist attacks around the world today have their origin in some form or the other in Pakistan. The Indian councillor reminded the UNSC that Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan and Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi have been called out for supporting terrorists including Osama bin Laden and they still continue to carry down the same path undeterred. On the issue of Kashmir and Ladakh, Madhu Sudan reiterated that the entire Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh were, are and will always be an integral and inalienable part of India, irrespective of what Pakistan representative believes. India called on Pakistan to immediately vacate all areas under its illegal occupation. In news from Pakistan, opposition leaders have slammed Prime Minister Imran Khan's government after Pakistan was ranked 140 out of the 180 countries in the Corruption Perception Index in a report by Watchdog Transparency International. Information Minister Fawad Chaudhry, however, cast doubt on the report's credibility. This comes at a time when the ruling PTI government has been facing growing criticism for failing to manage an ongoing economic crisis. Pakistan has slipped 16 places to rank 140 out of 180 countries in the Corruption Perception Index, according to a report by Berlin-based watchdog Transparency International. This comes at a time when Prime Minister Imran Khan-led PTI government is facing increasing criticism over an ongoing economic crisis. In 2020, Pakistan's CPI score was 31 and it was ranked 124 out of 180 countries. A country score is the perceived level of public sector corruption on a scale of 0 to 100, where 0 means highly corrupt and 100 means very clean as per CPI. Opposition PML and President Shahbaz Sharif blamed ruling PTI government has broken all records of corruption in last 20 years, while PPP leader Sheri Rahman said it has no face left. Information Minister Fawad Chaudhry, however, cast doubt on the report's credibility and said it does not mention financial corruption. The Transparency International report is not mentioned in financial corruption. The rule of law और स्टेट कैप्चर के मामला शामिल हैं तो रूल ऑफ लॉ में हम तो समझते हैं कि एक प्रोसेस है और इस प्रोसेस में हमारा वक्त तमाम इदारों को काम करने की जरूरत है Meanwhile, the Opposition Alliance Pakistan Democratic Movement or PDM on Tuesday vote to go ahead with its long march over rising inflation on March 23rd, rejecting the government's request to postpone the protest. The PDM, however, dropped the idea of moving on no trust motion against the government in the parliament, considering the time inappropriate for such a move. Moving on, locals in Gilgit Baltistan are struggling amid harsh winters as heavy snowfall has led to road blockages and suspension of electricity supply in many parts of the region. But the government has provided no relief measures, they blamed. Meanwhile, prices of LPG gas and firewood are also skyrocketing, making it difficult for the poor to survive amid rising inflation. Locals in Gilgit Baldistan have claimed that continuous harsh snowfall has led to road blockages and suspended electricity supply in many parts of the region and made their lives miserable while the government has completely ignored their plight. Locals blame Islamabad's indifferent attitude towards the illegally occupied region with no development over the years has been affecting all sections of the society. They are also facing hardships due to soaring inflation as prices of LPG gas and firewood are also skyrocketing. LGP gas or lagrim cash jadid gilate uskabat mengaito of kufateki as mango churra ye yogunke or ribunke what a harit sibilkul baharo chuki ek am tapke me tegadar bi bala parishanhe masdur bi parishanhe or her masaleme is what the gypsy ojan me passe away to meriguzarishogi ke development sector kothorasa again dakadenik is orotu yakunki iskeva is a masdur tak. Recently, a massive protest was also held by locals in Gilgit Baldistan over acute shortage of food supply and rampant black marketing amid harsh winters.
Locals blamed the Pakistan government for denying them their economic and social rights as they are forced to buy basic food items at higher prices amid rising inflation. The head of Norwegian Refugee Council, Jen Eglund, called for gender equality in Afghanistan during talks in Oslo with representatives of Taliban rulers, who have not been recognized by any country so far. Norway hosted the three-day summit on how to elevate Afghanistan's humanitarian crisis as millions of Afghans are at risk of starvation amid absence of foreign aid and frozen banking assets. The head of the Norwegian Refugee Council called on Tuesday for gender equality in Afghanistan during talks in Oslo between Taliban representatives and Western diplomats. Jan Eagland said it was unacceptable that their female staff in Afghanistan had to have a male relative accompanying them when meeting those they were helping. Eagland said his main message to the Taliban was that some of the promises they had made had not been fulfilled. We must have full equality between the genders. We have many hundred female employees who have full access to the people whom we will help. Vi kan ikke acceptera att det fortsatt någon steder ska kvinnor ansatte ha en 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 manlig släkting med sig. Det 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 är ödeläggande för. With millions of Afghans at risk of starvation this winter as poverty deepens, Norway hosted the three-day summit on how to alleviate Afghanistan's humanitarian crisis. It, however, stated it did not mean Taliban's formal recognition. Meanwhile, WHO, the World Health Organization, in a report earlier this week said. that fundamental and life-saving primary health care services in Afghanistan are under severe threat due to a lack of external funding since the change of regime last August. It called international donors for urgent action and find an alternative funding mechanism. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan government has announced compensation for more than a million rice farmers whose crops failed under a bot scheme to establish the world's first 100% organic farming nation. Sri Lanka's Agriculture Minister Mahinda Nanda Alud Gamage said on Tuesday that government will pay 200 million US dollars to farmers whose harvest were affected by the chemical fertilizer ban. Agriculture chemicals such as fertilizer were among the imports banned last year. However, the restrictions were lifted months later following farmer protest and crop failures. The island nation is currently reeling from a severe economic crisis that has triggered food shortages as the COVID-19 pandemic sent the tourism-dependent economy into a tailspin. As mercury dips in India's Jammu and Kashmir, the demand and sale of dry fish, locally known as hoggart, has increased in the Union territory. People in the Kashmir Valley relish dry vegetables, smoked fish and wild herbs to survive during the extreme winter. Amid harsh winter season in India's Jammu and Kashmir, the local traditional dry fish hoggard is in great demand in markets across the Union territory. During winter, food habits among Kashmiris change and people eat foods that protect them from severe cold. As the Kashmir Valley is witnessing Chilai Kalan, the 40-day harshest period of winter, People are only left to consume sun-dried vegetables and fish as freshly produced food items dwindle. Kashmiris dry fish in large quantities well in advance, especially for the harsh winter period, and enjoy the taste of this unique and crispy food item. हम तो अक्टूबर के एंड से यहाँ सब्जियाँ सुखाते थे। दो चार महीने के लिए हमारे गारू में ये चीजें सुखा सुखा कर रखते थे और ये होगाड़ जिसको सूखी मछलियाँ जिसको हम होगाड़ कहते हैं सर्दी में ये ज़्यादा लोग पसंद करते हैं हाँ जब किसी को बुखार होती है किसी को चेस्ट खराब होती है मीन वाइल अथॉरिटी इज क्लियर स्नो ऑफ द रोड्स इन डोडा टाउन टू ईस मूवमेंट ऑफ पीपल एंड गुड्स ऑफ द हैवी स्नो फॉल ब्लैंकेट द रीजन डिस्ट्रप्टिंग डेली लाइफ Heavy snowfall in Himalayan regions like Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh often leads to the road closures which hit the movement of essential supplies.
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.